Hi guys, I hope everyone is well. I have got another art thing for you today and I'll be looking at Andy Warhol's piece called Shoe and Roses. Uh, the Year 7s at school are looking at this at the moment on their Google Classroom. So it's kind of touching on that of what they could be doing, but it's also just covering the kind of concept of using another artist as inspiration. When we get into year 10 and 11 we're kind of calling it responses so when you do a response to an artist you're really investigating what they're doing what kind of techniques they're using what formal elements are really important for you to look at and putting that in your own work so i'll show you the picture that we're going to look at now and i'm going to get on with the things that we need so today i have a big a3 piece of paper but you can use whatever kind of paper you want also a smaller piece I have some watercolours for the background, um, therefore I will need a big paintbrush and some water. I will need some scissors, I will need some normal paints, whether it's acrylic black paint or poster paint, that will do. And that should be it. Really, the main thing you need to think about as well is what you want to be putting on it. Now, I personally have been playing a bit more piano, so I would like to put a piano piece in my front room. Uh, therefore I found a picture of mine of a piano and I'm going to be using that in replacement of the roses in his piece. So we are trying to replicate things that Andy Warhol did in this art piece. Now there's a couple of main formal elements that really jump out to me at first. First of all is going to be colour. There are obviously quite a simplistic colour scheme going on. You have one in the background and then black with the details in the foreground. The second thing that stands out is the composition. It's all set out in a grid, all spaced out quite evenly. And amongst looking at these formal elements, I want to try and figure out the best way to replicate this technique. You might not have the materials at home that the artist used in their work, but it's up to you to find out what materials you could use to make it look most like their work. Composition and colour, so the way things are laid out and what colours they're using. As it's a grid, I would like to start off with our main piece of paper and kind of block out where things are going to go. On his, I think it's like four pictures by three, but really you can do as many that fit, fit on your paper, um, as long as it's in a grid formation. I have actually put out nine dots fairly evenly spaced on my paper, kind of sitting towards the top a little bit. We know his is all quite top heavy with those coloured circles, so I've left a little bit more of a gap at the bottom. Now these dots are going to represent where I actually do the spots with the first layer. So the colour that he's used is a really bright pink. It's really bright, there's some that are a little bit lighter than others, meaning that there might be a bit more water in the palette on those certain flowers. Um, but the pink really does relate to the rose. So you could use pink if you like, but is there another colour that's a little bit more relevant to what you're drawing? Um, there's different intensities throughout, and it's quite inconsistent in the shapes that they've used. But all in all, they are quite circular shapes. He's not trying to make them look like roses. So we know that his are really different. Each circle is pretty different in how intense the colour is. So I'm not going to worry too much about everything. I would like to just get my row of circles down. I want to channel the looseness of his work and how irregular things can be. Okay, that did not take me long. As you can see, I've got a bit more of a gap at the bottom. We've got our composition of the grid, and the colour is a very light, uh, watery, opaque, and then fairly intense in some areas, just like this. So don't have to use pink, but get the whole concept of how he used colour and try and translate it into your own work. That's going there to dry. Next stage. To achieve the black details on top, I want to make some sort of print so I can actually put it in paint and then push it on top. They're all nice and irregular, but they're obviously done with the same size sort of stamp or stencil. So um, grab a picture. I haven't got Photoshop on this computer, but I do like using either Publisher or PowerPoint. So if you drag in your picture into PowerPoint, um, you can easily double click on that picture. There's a, there's a tab called Recolor. You can click on that and then you've got black and white 50-50 or black and white 25% kind of thing. Click on that and it really makes a nice crisp stencil for you out of that picture. So it's just leaving you with black sections and white sections. 
So my plan now is that we're gonna use my laptop as a light box, hold a piece of paper against it, draw around all the lines, and I'm gonna be cutting it out all in one stamp. It needs to be all the black bits because I'm gonna be putting the black paint on here and printing it. Um, but you kind of want all the black bits to be attached. If you have too many different sections, it's not really gonna work very well and you'll get very fiddly. Um, it's gonna be fiddly enough anyway. Think about the size of your image. There is no point in doing a piano this big when all of my spots are this big. Ta-da! Um, what I did do is actually put a little tab on this side, you see? So I'm gonna fold that up and that's how I'm gonna actually use it, printing be able to pull it up easily. If you haven't got really thick paper, it might be a good idea to glue two bits together so it's super thick. But now you can see that I have my stamp raring to go. The next part of this, I would like to be transferring black paint onto here and putting it on to my circles. Um, as you can see by the picture of Andy Warhol, there is just block black colour. We're not getting too fancy and mixing colours together. He's got block black colour. It's not always consistent in the details that come out. So therefore I want you to be printing it and then leaving it. Um, for this bit you might need some sort of plate. I've got a piece of cardboard and I'm going to be putting my paint on here, spreading it out a little bit so I've got a nice surface to work on. What I'm going to be doing is using my stencil, putting it in the paint. Try not to get your paint hands too painty. If you do get some on them, wipe them off because you don't really want to be getting loads of splodges on here. Okay, once I'm happy with the amount of black that is on this side, I am getting ready to paint it. We start at the top and work our way down so we don't get all painty. It's a good job I've got this little tab here so I can hold it by that. Arrange where I'm gonna put it, drop it down, once it's down, don't try and move it, because it will just be messy. And try and push down each section with your fingers. Try not getting paint all over the white. <laughs> Ta-da! So as you can see, we're never going to get every single black off of every single stencil that we put down. But that's not what it's about. That I really love that kind of rawness of the prints that he's been making. It's the repeated pattern and each one is super individual. So whereas you're gonna be as neat as you can, please do not go back and try and fill in any gaps because these are little artworks in itself, seeing all these little tiny little grooves. So that wasn't too stressful. That was looking pretty bad man ting, if you ask me. Um, last bit that we do have is a section down here. So I want to be putting something down here that preferably relates to your theme. Let's say I'm doing my music, I've got my piano, I've started off my artist response to Andy Warhol. I might just do the keys of a piano. So it's like an up close picture of um, what I'm doing. Uh, I could even draw this on, but I did find actually a bit of black paper that I might cut it out and stick it on because I think it might look a little bit cleaner. Um, let's give it a go. And this is my finished product. I stuck this on the bottom. It's kind of a close-up of the keys in black and white. I think that could do with a little bit more work, to be honest with you. I've gone a bit further down. Um, it should probably be a bit wider at the top in black. I like the idea of the printing. I think it's working really well, actually. Um, I did think about maybe making a kind of stamp out of this. So having some sort of cardboard, I think that might make it a little less messy. However, it's pretty successful as far as artist responses go. I think it's pretty obvious that oh. matching the colors, I've got the kind of technique on the right track. And um, next thing I might do is play around with the different colors of the background and maybe look at different shapes, maybe a different way of arranging them, maybe a different media for this down here, but that's all to come. Um, to have an artist and to channel the kind of formal elements um, that are really obvious in their work into your work, like here, you can see that you're understanding it. Okay, and that's the main thing for us, is to make sure that you are understanding the artist and using the right medias in the right ways to show that you've actually looked at their work and understood the process of it. But yes, this is my Andy Warhol uh, keys and piano piece. Okay, bye.